what are some of the best and worst trades out there for Eric Carlson? Going to dive into some of the potential trade packages from the Penguins, the Hurricanes, the Maple Leafs, and the Kraken on today's episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked On Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay area my name is jd young contributor at inside the rink and san jose hockey now and i want to thank you for making locked on sharks your first listen probably a part of the locked on network we cover your team every day or at least three days a week right now during the off season but that doesn't mean the content doesn't stop coming and uh, of course right now we have eric the carlson watch day 23 uh with as we continue to wait for the eric carlson trade saga that to finally come to an end. Um, so we're going to today discuss his interview he had while winning the Golden Puck in Sweden, and then look at some of the potential uh, trade packages that are floating out there on the internets uh, and see which ones we kind of like, which ones we don't, which ones kind of don't make sense. So um, let's start, of course, with Eric Carlson's interview, right? He, uh, over the weekend, won a just adding Dude just racking up awards this week <laughs> over this summer. So um, adding the golden puck, which is uh, Sweden, they give it to the Swedish top hockey player. Um, this is the third time he has now won it. Um, this to go with his Norris. And then he also got uh, these other like Swedish, like Beth's athlete. Um, so it's it's been a big summer for Eric Carlson, at least when it comes to filling up his uh, his you know, display cabinet with awards. So, um, but some news that kind of came out from, from here, and this is, you know, um, being translated from Swedish to English. So there might be a little bit of things, a little off for here or there, but, um, for the most part, I mean, he, he kind of talked about with, you know, he did, he has officially, you know, asked for a trade, which we all knew. Um, we knew this was coming. We knew it was going to happen. Um, and you know the the thing with, with it is um kind of where does this go for for eric carlson and for the sharks and um you know he talked about where he wants to go win and that is not going to happen to san jose you and i both know the sharks aren't going to win anything in the next few years um and for eric carlson who's just coming off his best season um in his career um again with all the awards he's winning and his, he knows this is the best time for him to try to, you know, his, his value's never been higher, right? He knows this is a time where teams are going to be interested in trying to take him on um, and him to try to go win a, a championship, um, you know, go win that Stanley Cup, right? Um, and, you know, in this con, in this, he talked about his contract. He talked about a bunch of different things, but with the, the sharks, right. He talked with Mike Greer, right. And he said, you know, he's been open with it. He's been very open about where he wants to go. Uh, you know, he's, he's not just kind of holding the sharks hostage here and saying like, I'm, you know, I just want to go to this one place or whatever. And, um, you know, look at back to, um, you know, there's been trades like that where it's like, I only want to go play for Boston or I only want to go play for, you know, team X, Y, or Z. And that really kind of limits your return value, right? Because you, the other team kind of has, has the leverage and there seems to be a bunch of teams kind of competing, right? He, he confirmed that he's talked with Pittsburgh. He's talked with, Carolina he's talked with Seattle and then he's also talked with Toronto um and you know he doesn't have a destination he in mind whatever you know he is open to whichever one makes the most sense for him to try to go win and he's actually said he's talking to some other teams as well but uh those were unnamed teams so um I think for him though he knows right you know he said should the Sharks agree with the club or have you decided he's like they should come to understand somewhere. It takes time and it's a process. I, you know, we know what that, that type of business, but he's going to make sure it works out for him and his family um, to, with that. And I think Mike Greer has been, you know, you saw with the Brent Burns trade, he was 
knew Brett Burns wanted to go in, worked with Brett Burns to get him traded to you know Carolina, who was not on Brent Burns. This is no trade, you know, three team no trade list, but worked with him to try to make sure that that facilitate that trade for him. Um, I think the Sharks are in a better position with Eric Carlson. Yes, I know Eric Carlson makes way more money, um, has a longer contract, but I think Eric Carlson again right now showed when Eric Carlson's right and feeling well, um, he is the best, one of the best players in the world. And Eric Carlson was the best defender in the world um, by winning the Norris last season. And don't miss me with the, he doesn't play defense, whatever. I don't, we, I've, I've, you guys know how I feel about Eric Carlson. Eric Carlson's amazing. Um, you, Eric Carlson is a legitimate special game breaker type talent. So um, some other things that were kind of at least interesting to me in this um, article or in his, his interview um, was how he's kind of re kind of reattacked his training, right. And, you know, kind of finding a more of a balance on training and trying to kind of, and recovery. And I think, especially as athletes get older, more focus on that recovery. And if you go back way, way, way to the beginning of the season, um, David Quinn gave Eric Carlson a bunch of rest days, right. Um, knowing that's for him, the most important thing is to be healthy because if Eric Carlson's healthy, we see what we get when Eric Carlson's healthy. And I think having that attitude and you know, hopefully whatever team he gets traded to can have that same kind of, you know, partnership and relationship with Eric Carlson of making sure that he is able to get that rest that he needs um, to be able to go beat Eric Carlson on, on game night. And I thought that was really interesting of, on how we kind of talked about um his training, how he's kind of re looked at his training and the way he does his training and kind of focusing more on, uh, not just training, but the rest that comes with, with the training. Um, I, I thought that was really in, intriguing and interesting from, from Carlson to kind of learn about that. And, you know, it, it worked right. <laughs> Eric Carlson played every game last season and he put up 101 points on a terrible, terrible sharks team. Um, so I think, uh, for him, you know, you utilizing that tool and keeping it going forward is, is going to be a big thing for him. So, um, yeah, I, I think that was really interesting. And then, you know, he kind of also talked about like when he's done, he's probably going to move back to Ottawa, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you know, and I, I, but I think the big thing for, for Carlson is he's open. He wants to get moved to a team. I think this is going to happen at some point. And I think it's just going to come down to whoever blinks first, whether it's Mike Greer, um, or whether it's one of the teams that are trying to kind of acquire Eric Carlson. Um, but it seems like Eric Carlson is, is ready to move on is the Sharks are ready to move on. And um, I think everybody's ready to move on for this. So it'll just be whenever it actually happens. So um, before we get into some potential trades out there and look at, um, you know, I scoured the internet, looked at kind of, the best trade packages I could find best realistic trade packages I could find. Um, you know, I'm not just going to be like Eric Carlson for like five first round pick, like realistic trade packages I could find from the internets. Um, you know, from, so we're going to look at teams from, you know, Pittsburgh and Carolina and then look at Seattle and Toronto, since those are kind of the, the new teams entering uh, the fray right now. Um, before we get into that, do need to take a quick break. Uh, talk to you guys about our good friends over at, um, athletic greens and, um, athletic greens, something that's used every day in my household. Uh, my wife, my wife, um, uses it every day. She's had some issues with gut health. Um, you know, the, sometimes gluten doesn't sit with her, all that fun stuff. Right. Um, she started using athletic greens and it's really, really helped to solve a lot of those problems. Um, helps her to be more healthy, helps her to eat well. And again, it's just one scoop of uh, AG1, pour it in a glass of water, shake it up, drink it before you have your morning coffee. You're good to go. With that scoop, you're uh, absorbing 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and apps to help start your day, right? The special blend of ingredients supports your gut health, your nervous system, your immune system, your energy, recovery, focus, aging, all the things. And you know how hard and expensive it can be to keep track of all the different uh, supplements and vitamins you need. AG1 takes care of that for you and it costs less than three bucks a day. That's cheaper than your cold brew habit and in, you're investing in your health. So right now is the time to reclaim your health, arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition to make it easy, Athletic Green is going to give you a free one-year supply 
of their immune supporting vitamin D and five free tribal packs with your first purchase. All you have to do visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, it's athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership of your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. All right. Um, what are some actual realistic trades? Um, so, again, I scoured the internet, tried to find some trades that actually make sense, aren't just like super one sided, and you know, ones that kind of get a little bit of info on some of these guys. So, um, going to start uh, with our good friend Shang Peng from San Jose Hockey Now, um, who proposed this trade a couple weeks ago um, on San Jose Hockey Now. So, in from you know the word back from you know talking to his people seemed like a fair deal. All right, so the trade is of course the Penguins acquire Eric Carlson um, and the Sharks retain forty percent, which is four point six million dollars over the last four years of his contract. Um, the Sharks get one defenseman Jeff Petrie, uh, two defenseman Ty Smith, forward Sam Pullian, twenty twenty four first round pick. A 2025 second round pick that can be upgraded to a first round pick if the Shark, if the uh, Penguins win the cup in any of the next two years and Carlson plays half the games uh, in the the playoff games. So um, the Jeff Petrie. So we'll we'll start with Jeff Petrie, who kind of feels like it might be a little bit of the fly in the ointment with this because Jeff Petrie sounds like he doesn't want to go um to san jose just because his family's from the midwest um and it doesn't seem like they really want um to move out to california which is understandable so you've also heard marcus peterson shang ping's also reported marcus peterson's been one of the ones that the sharks are potentially looking at at acquiring so maybe you you swap out that uh uh peterson for petrie um thing is the the Petrie would make would be a little bit easier, I think, for the Sharks um, because I, I think his contract runs out a little bit sooner. I'm pulling up the contracts right now. Uh, actually, no, sorry. Uh, Petrie's got two years left at his six point two five million. Uh, Marcus Peterson has four years left, uh, a little over four million dollars, and is twenty seven. So give me Marcus Peterson over Jeff Petrie. If Petrie's contract ended up sooner. I would rather get Petrie just to get out of the contract, but. Um, those are, are the the players that you would – those are kind of the big contract pieces that you're getting back. Um, Ty Smith, who's a 23-year-old left-handed defenseman, um, is in the last year of his ELC this year and, and is a, a young up-and-coming defenseman. Um, played mostly in the AHL last year but put up good numbers at 24 points in 39 games this year. Um, did play nine NHL games for the Penguins. Played a bunch of NHL games for the the Devils over the last two seasons, where he had um, 23 points in 48 games and 20 points in 66 games over the last two seasons. Um, so he looks to be kind of a, a full time. I would expect him to kind of be a full time NHLer at this point. And, you know, five foot eleven, 180 pounds, so he's a little bit smaller, but um, can skate like nobody's business. So uh, former first round pick in the 2018 draft class as well. So. Um, he would be kind of him and then Sam Pouillon would be kind of the, the big pieces um, getting back. Sam Pouillon, six foot two right winger, um, four, 214 pounds, 20, just turned 22. Um, also in the, I think he's in the last year of his contract. I'm pulling up right now. Uh, yeah, last year of his uh, ELC as well. So um, still would be a cheap contract for the Sharks going forward if they wanted to keep him. Um, as an RFA. So most he's interesting because he missed most last year. He took a leave of absence with some mental health uh, issues. Only he had four goals in 15 games with the, in the AHL with the Wilkes Barry Scranton Penguins. And then also had an assist in three NHL games last year where he made his NHL debut. Um, and then, but the season before in, in the AHL, he had 37 points in 72 games in his first uh, full AHL season. So, you know, he's an interesting player there. You just hope that he's, um, you know, was able to kind of, he did come back last year to play. So that's hopefully, that's a good sign that he maybe kind of figured out what he needed to with some of his mental health issues and that he can continue to move forward and uh, develop and grow his game. So um, he would be, those would be kind of the prospects that you'd be getting back. And then you're, you know, hoping that your, your picks 
um, become become solid, you know, probably end of the first round picks type of situation. So um, not the worst trade. Uh, I think you're you're hoping that Pouliana or, or Smith can kind of pop for you um, and then that you're able to kind of utilize, uh, continuing to add pieces in the back end of, of the first round but with the picks. So, um, or that the Penguins just absolutely created one of the year. The Penguins created the first year and it's a top five protected pick. And then the second year they win the cup and then you get a first round pick. That's, that's, that's how you thread the needle right there. So um, for the Canes, so um, Sharks would acquire Jack uh, for Jack Drury uh, and then for Jacob Blake, uh, Jackson Blake, excuse me. And then uh, Brett Pesci, the defenseman, and then a 2024 first round pick and a 2025 second round pick that would turn into a first rounder if Carlson plays at least 65 games over the next two seasons. Um, Sharks would also retain 40% or $4.6 million as well. Um, this is from Tristan McKinstry at Clutch Sports. Um, Jack Drury has been a name that has been kind of floated around as being potentially available. So Drury last season, um, kind of that tweener the past couple of years. So he made his NHL debut in the 21-22, um, but he played mostly in the AHL where he had 52 points in 68 games. Um, last season, play you know, about half and half. So he had eight points in 38 games in the NHL, but then 24 points in 37 games for the uh, AHL. Uh, he's a six-foot 181 pounds center, uh, left-handed shot. So he, you know, kind of projecting to be a, a bottom six forward uh, for you uh, type of player. Um, Jackson Blake, interesting prospect. So he's a former 2021 fourth round pick. Um, he goes and um, plays at University of North Dakota. We got don't know North Dakota, pretty much kind of a powerhouse in, in college hockey. Uh, our good friend, Lord, uh, our, uh, Weatherby, um, also played, uh, there plenty of players, a ton of the Sens prospects have played for, um, for them as well. But yeah, Lord Jasper, w uh, played there, but he's a five foot 11, 165 pound, uh, winger, um, right-handed shot, which the Sharks do need has put up some numbers though, with the, uh, in the USHL and the Chicago steel in the 21, 22 season. 77 points in 61 games. And last year in his first year in NCAA, uh, 42 points in 39 games, including 16 goals. Um, not not bad, especially for, as a freshman to come in there and, and produce like that. Um, was on the uh, NCAA NCHC All Rookie Team. Um, like he's you know pretty pretty solid uh, prospect for, and we know the Canes they are very good at drafting guys. Like they just pick good guys constantly. So um, you know a little bit uh, on the smaller end, but uh, the dude I th is a potential potential solid pick or uh, getting back from there. Um, and then you're getting again kind of the same thing with the picks, right? Is you're hoping that the you can kind of thread the needle with some of these picks. Um, I don't expect the Canes to be bad next year. They'll probably be good for the next couple of seasons. But um, this one, the, the Eric Carlson going to Carolina, just really weird with the Brett Burns thing. Um, oh, sorry. And then Brett Pesci, right? He he would be the other uh, piece that you'd be getting back. Um, he is in the last year of his deal uh, with the Carolina Hurricanes. He is an offensively, you know, kind of, leaning defenseman um who can put up points and and i think would be the sharks penalty kill or power play specialist um all that all that fun stuff that um that they would be needing for um uh, if they do trade eric carlson um but yeah brett pesh uh pesci does have is going to last year of his four million dollar contract um does have a modified 15 team no trade clause but he would be a player that you would play that you would kind of play let him pump up his points and then you would 1000 percent trade him at the trade deadline and try to get back whatever good pieces you could get back as you ship them to a team that uh, a potential contender who needs a you know and kind of a, a probably be their second defense you know uh, second pairing defenseman um that would be kind of what you'd so you'd be kind of you'd get getting these picks and then whatever picks or whatever things pieces you'd get back from an eventual brett pesci trade so um Again, the Carolina thing's still weird to me with the Brent Burns or Carlson. It's just we've seen that story in San Jose. Maybe they could put it together in in Carolina, um, but I, I 
I mean, you would get some salt. I think this, I like the Hurricanes package more than I like the, the Penguins package personally. Um, but I it just, it logically just doesn't make sense to me to send that Eric Carlson would want to go to Carolina. So um, before we continue um, and we talk about the potential, um, we get potential Seattle trades and look at potential Toronto trade. Uh, do want to thank you guys again for making a locked on sharks. Your first listen, probably a part of the locked on network. We cover your team every day or at least three days a week right now in the off season. Um, but that doesn't mean the rest of the locked on network. There's plenty of stuff going on uh, right now, especially if you want to get, uh, get ready for football season, right? Football's back in and swing. We got training camp starting in the next week for most teams. Um, go check out like the locked on Niners. Locked on Raiders, plenty of good stuff out there. Or if you want to keep checking out Locked on Sharks, we got some good stuff coming this week as well. Um, we're going to have a roster reset, kind of look at a nice little recap of who's left, who's who's come in, and kind of what's, what's next for the Sharks as they continue to head into what's uh, going to be a rebuilding season. And then a very special guest. Um, so I'm no, no names yet, but um, very special guests making their return to Locked on Sharks. So uh, make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course, uh, you can watch on YouTube as well. All right. So the next ones are a little interesting. Uh, we'll start with the Kraken. And the Kraken, Kraken are weird because of right there in a kind of a weird spot, right? They're they're definitely still kind of growing and putting this team together, but you know, I think they really exceed a lot of expectations last season. And do they want to kind of go for it and getting a guy like Eric Carlson adds a legitimate star to a team that doesn't have a star yet. I think Matty Beniers is well on his way to becoming a star player. Um, Shane Wright, who knows if he's still with the Kraken. Um, but they're they're kind of a, a interesting spot right now where they could maybe try to go keep maybe pull the reins back a little bit and say we're going to kind of rebuild this the right way or you just try to strike while the iron's hot and adding a, a piece like Carlson um, takes you from a fringe playoff contender to a you may be a dark horse uh, Stanley Cup contender especially you never know with a specific division but um, a lot of the trades I saw had Vince done who was an RFA, but he just signed a new deal over the weekend. Uh, I think it was like four years at about a little over $7 million a year. Um, so it'd be weird, I think, to trade Vince Dunn, um, even though you just signed him, but who knows? So um, I found some deals that did not um, have Vince Dunn in them. So um, this one, a little weird. Uh, just because I don't know, you're not getting any picks back for the, this deal, at least. Um, but you're getting Shane Wright, who was the fourth overall pick in the 2022 draft and was considered to be the first overall pick literally until the day before. Uh, and then the uh, Habs picked uh, Slavkovsky. So getting Shane Wright out of it, who did have a kind of, you know, little bit of an up and down season last year of, of course right he started with the kraken got kind of bounced around a little bit between the kraken and the ahl and then got finally uh, eventually got sent back to the ohl uh where he put up 37 points in 20 games for the windsor spitfires including 15 goals and 22 assists um the thing weird thing with with uh with shane Wright is since he's not 20 yet um, he will either have to play with the Sharks if the Sharks acquire him, or he'll have to go back to the OHL. And I kind of the way I, I feel that my I think my career was just sent him back to the um, into the OHL for another season, and then let him go play at the Barracuda when their season's over, and then next year would be a, a you know a kind of a full time NHL, I assume. But um, Six foot, 198 pound center. Um, again, was considered to be the first overall pick until he went fourth. Um, but last year, he also played in the AHL, um, had six points in eight games in the AHL, and then had nine points in 24 games in the playoffs for the AHL. Did have two points in, in eight games with the Kraken as well, um, and then seven points for in seven games for Team Canada. Like Shane Wright is really, really good. Um, and I I think you had Shane Wright, and then you get 
like you're you're really starting to add some pieces if you can get Shane Wright, who's going to be an NHL player, you know, maybe not not this season, but the following season. And then you got Will Smith and then Eklund. Like you, you can start to really see um, how you're kind of building down the middle with, with Shane Wright. Like Shane Wright and Smith as your kind of ones, two for your um, centers is a really, really – and then you be said as number three. Like that's a really, really good start right there. So um, – the other pieces you're getting back, Justin Schultz and Alex Weinberg. Uh, both these guys are going into the last year of their deal. So, again, they might not look very good on paper right now, but it's one of those, okay, then how do you flip those into other pieces type of, of kind of that, that trade tree, right? Uh, where it's like, you, right, you're looking at like the Brent Burns, right? Oh, we got Steven Lorenz and E2 McEnany, a third round pick. Well, now you turn Steven Lorenz into uh, Anthony Duclair. And then maybe if you trade Anthony Duclair, it doesn't like you get, you see what you're kind of doing here by trying to acquire talented players. Um, and, you know, so Justin Schultz, right? Older veteran defenseman player, but type of player where we're going to the last year of his deal. He's an expiring contract. Um, does have a 10 team, no trade list. So he sharks may or may not be on it. Um, but then you could work with him at, at the deadline. Hey, if you want to send, you know, do right by you, send you to a, a contender um, type, you know, and let you try to go win uh, another cup. Cause he former, um, um, yeah, he was on the, the penguins. He's yeah. He's won cups before. So, um, but try to wake, help you go win another cup in your, so, or, and then you'd also get Alex Weinberg, who's a 28 uh, year old center. Uh, last year of his contract at 4.5 does have a also a 10 team no trade list, but kind of the same thing. Hey, let us go help you go win a cup somewhere. Let's thank you for your services. Uh, why don't you go try to go win somewhere else type, uh, you know, of, of players? So, um, that's like uh, you're kind of getting some pieces to add some pieces later. So, um, Getting Shane Wright and some lottery, some pieces, potential pieces later on. I think getting Shane Wright's a, a big win there. So um, the Sharks would have to retain 50%. And I don't see Mike Greer doing that. Um, but if it's how you get Shane Wright, okay. Sign me up. And then the Leafs trade. William the Islander for Eric Carlson. I mean... Sure, let's go. Um, I don't think this one happens because I mean, it makes it's too much fun, and the one for one trade would be too much. Where Sharks would just get out of uh Carlson's contract. Um, I know the Leafs, so the big thing with Nylander or Nylander, William Nylander, Nylander is that you would eventually have to pay him, so he is going into the last year of his uh deal where he this season he is making a little under seven million dollars he's 27 gonna be 28 um is an absolute scoring machine had 87 points in 82 games last year for the maple leaves is you know um had multiple 30 goal seasons at 40 goal season last year um Again, still, you know, just just turned 27, but you would be giving him a contract. And he's looking for a $10 million a year contract um, over the, I would assume, an 8 by 10 type of, uh, of, of deal. And the Sharks could easily afford that. And then, but you could just say, why didn't you just keep Tebow Meyer? Uh, when Nylander is better than Tebow Meyer. Um, so... I don't know if they would do that. Um, I think this, the Sharks would probably just take another bad contract back, whether it's a Matt Murray. Uh, I don't know. Jake Muzzin, I, I've heard, is potentially uh, thrown out there as they maybe want to try to get off his contract. Um, but, I mean, you're getting William Nylander, who's one of the best players in the NHL, and then you can continue to build your all-will or all-William team uh, with Nylander, Eklund, and Smith, uh, which would be just super fun. Um, <laughs> just all Williams. So, does have a modified no-trade list of, of 10 teams. I don't know if the Sharks are on or off it, um, but it does seem like they don't want to pay him. And granted, you're paying for you're going to, have to pay Austin Matthews. His contract is up at the end of this year. Um, you're paying Tavares. You're paying uh, Mitch Marner. 
you got Riley Morgan who just signed a new contract recently. Um, so it would, you know, maybe the Sharks get Jake Muzzin or, but I know he's the LTR candidate. Um, who's on the last year of his deal. Like there's, there's some, and the, they just, you know, I know the, the, the Leafs just signed John Klingberg, but Eric Carlson's way better than John Klingberg. Who knows what the Leafs would do there. You never know, but I would 1000% do Nylander for Eric Carlson because um, Nylander's an amazing player who could fit the, the Sharks going forward um, while you're, you know, then you don't have to retain any money for Eric Carlson. You may have to retain some money, say if it's like 25%. Okay, and then you're kind of dealing with the potential cap ramifications later on. Um, but I just don't know of Nylander if he would make sense for the Sharks' future core. Um, but he's still he's just he's in his prime right now. You're going to get a bunch of good years out of out of him, and he's probably going to be a 35 goal scorer for you for the next couple seasons. So kind of the same arguments we made for signing Timo Meyer long term. You can just put those same arguments to William Nylander. He's going to be good for a long time. Having good players around your prospects helps your prospects pro, uh, get better quicker. So um, yeah, so those were the potential um, Sharks trades um, again. I don't know if any of them make sense. I, getting Shane Wright, like if you can get Shane Wright out of this, like I think that's the way to go because he's young. He's potential to be a one C or if not your two C. Like you have, you have a Smith, um, you know, like um, Smith Wright, like as your as your top two centers going forward. Like that, that's awesome. Like you're that is a great great start to for a rebuilding franchise and then you got Eklund and you got musty and you're, you're gonna have some other pieces coming up and a top five pick in this year's draft like cracking yeah do that one do that one mike Greer. um anyway that's gonna be it for me today like i said we'll be back on so with this week it'll be a monday episode a wednesday episode and a thursday episode that's probably gonna be the schedule ish going forward um that way i don't have to do things thursday night and i, I think views and downloads are a little bit better on, on Wednesday, Thursdays than they are on Fridays because I think most people weekends and all that fun stuff. So, um, but that's going to be it for me today. Like I said, we'll be back on Wednesday. So Tuesday night on, on YouTube with a roster reset. And then we have a special return guest um, coming up later this week. So make sure you guys are following along wherever you get podcasts. And of course you can watch on YouTube as well. Um, you follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and threads at locked on sharks. You can follow me on Twitter and threads at my fry hole and then tell Wednesday. Bye friends. You're locked on. Sh-